should I use a patch bay for my mastering chain? Now, personally, for me, I say no. Only because there's better options. If, look, for me, personally, right, I run through this chain. I know exactly what pieces of equipment I want at every stage. So I hardwire my, my, my chain. So it comes out of my bell converters, into the first rack, into the second rack, into the third rack, into the fourth rack. I've run through each piece of equipment, never changes. I That's how I like my chain. So for me, I don't need a patch bay. And I, I find with a patch bay, let's say for instance, I had a patch bay there. I've got cables coming back, forwards, back, forward. There's so much back and forth that's totally unnecessary, especially for me. Now, if I was to fit um, or, or want to have a patch bay, uh, so I could change what I was doing, uh, uh, change pieces of equipment in my mastering chain. If I was to be wanting to do that, I would do what we've done in Studio A, which is fit an SPL Hermi or fit a um, the Dangerous Music uh, Liaison, I think it is. Um, fit one of those. So what, what that basically is, is we can... Let's say for argument's sake, we had these four racks as chains. We could put those uh, four racks into the Hermie and basically just root the chain. So we could use the chain that's built into the Hermie and everything just kind of roots through there. It's a patch bay, but it's, it's not a patch bay in the conventional sense of how you would think of a patch bay pulling out cables it's buttons and everything's kind of hardwired it's a far better way of working especially for mastering now i would i really wouldn't advise and i've done this in the past um and i've kind of tested the difference um between hardwiring a, a mastering chain in comparison to using a patch bay with like bantam cables or xlr uh, with um quarter inch jacks and whatnot there is a difference and you'll I found when I did this test and this is the reason why I don't use those sorts of patch bays I and I had a, I had an expensive I think it was a I think they called it a stagecraft one and it was a it was like a seven eight hundred pound patch bay but what I found with it was that um additional surface noise and noise and overall kind of general noise was being added which was totally unnecessary to add because if you're hardwiring, you don't add that um, or add as much of that. Um, the other thing was the kind of signal chain, the delay uh, that needed to be compensated for. Um, the delay in the chain was far greater because there were so many more cables going backwards and forwards. So there was a lot more delay um, in the chain um, and yeah it was a it was a far more expensive way of working and also as well is every now and then it doesn't matter how good your cables are every now and then on a patch bay they'll need a little twist get out some static they'll they'll get some sort of static i found all the time with the bantam patch bays um my kind of routine in the mornings was i'd, I'd come in and i'd have to get go to the patch bay and give all the bantam cables a little twist and you'd hear them go <laughs> And it would release some static that they'd build up. It just build up of, of static or something. But this is this is a totally unnecessary situation to be put in by using something like a mastering um, grade SPL Hermes or a dangerous music liaison or hardwiring everything. Going this one goes into this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this. And if the thing is with that is. If you don't plan on going, right, I want to put that EQ over here, I want to put that in the chain here, and I want to move that there. If that's not the case and that's not how you want to work, then build your chain, um, you know, exactly as it is. Go one into the next one into the next one. Another quick thing to mention in regards to this is I've seen many mastering studios do this, and I, I don't I don't technically agree with it, is is using basically having uh, a 16 channel interface that then has they've got all their pieces of equipment set up on inserts and for me i'm looking at that and like i've said to them before it's like you know do you realize how much conversion you're doing that's totally unnecessary like for me 
I, I hit my um, DA converter, the Bell DA converter, I come out into the master chain, I hit the A to D converter, go back in. There's very, very little conversion by doing this. With, with a Hermes or a, a Dangerous Liaison, that, all that conversion, you don't have to do that because it's all taken care of inside the analog um, kind of this, this kind of patch bay. But when it comes to the way that these people, uh, I've seen people working, is that each, each unit is on an insert. So they're going insert. So you're going out, A to D, A to D, D to A, and there's multiple 16, 16 times the amount of conversion. And it, it, has, a, it has a massive effect. So yeah, I'd, I <coughs> highly recommend don't do that. Um, but yeah, should you use a patch bay um, that's like a Bantam or a uh, XLR or a TRS jack? No, not for mastering. For mixing, maybe, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with doing that for mixing. Um, it's, it's slightly different when you, when you, in regards to mixing. I personally, I, just, I, I don't generally like to use a patch bay because I know what I want to insert. So I have it already there, inserted, ready to go. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's my opinion on it. Um, 